tell you how merciful is our God. You have been so wrong. He is ready to accept you and forgive all your sin. And then you start to say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Everywhere you go, China, millions, hundred million of Muslims will recite the same surah. You go to Africa, they said the same surah. You go to Arab, the same surah. In Asia, Nusantara, Malay, Indonesia, Brunei, Thailand, all the same. Every Muslim recite the same thing. One language, the same surah. To show how united we are in the prayer. We are connected. Even you don't understand the language, you recite that. Then later on, you learn the meaning. Al when you said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. What is the meaning of that? Now, this is where the Kushok come in. It's reminding us the power, the importance to be thankful, to be grateful. To who? To the God who created you, who provide for you, who give you the peace, who give you the eye that can see, the ear that can hear, all the senses. It's a gift from Almighty God who created us. That's why we say, Alhamdulillah, all praise belong to Allah. Who is Allah? Rabb, the creator, the provider of what? Al-Alamin. He is the God of the world. He is not only the God of the Arab, the God of the Malay, the God of the Pakistani, the Turks. No, he is telling us, He, Allah, Rabbul Alamin. That connect us again with the world. That we are worshipping the God who created every one of us. But a lot of Muslims are not aware of that. And also not yet Muslim, they don't know. You don't blame them because they were not taught. We taught that Allah only for Arab. Or in Malaysia, Allah is the Lord of the Malay class. No. Allah is not only the God to the Muslim. He said, He is telling us, He is introducing Himself. Allah Rabbul Alameen. Remember this, brother and sister, as fellow Muslim. Please remember that. We have problems. Sometimes the way we talk about Allah is like Allah is our God. Mine, not yours. No, no. You must have the right understanding. When you have the right understanding, then the kushu. The sweetness of reciting this ayah will come in. You feel so good. You are not worshipping a God made of stone. A God who claim himself to be God. A human say, I am God. I am the living God. God, Allah, don't look like any of his creation. Anything you can see with your eye is not the true God. That is man-made God. You understand that? And this is important. The true God, nobody create him. He is a creator. And nobody know how he look like. Why? That is why. That is how he introduces himself. Can you imagine if somebody said, Oh, I dream of God. How do God look like in your dream? Like this. Oh, you can make money already. <laughs> you can draw a picture and refine the picture again. You know, make the eye look at you. You know, oh, I think you can sell that portrait. Mm -hmm. You frame it nicely, 1,000 ringgit. God don't look like you, like me. All the prophets, when they were asked by their follower, 
How do God look like? Laysa kamisli shayun. He looked like none of his creation. But you feel his existence. You can feel his power. By you looking at his creation, you know there is a creator. Even when Moses was asked, how do God look like? When he received the Ten Commandments, he asked, Abraham also asked, God, can you show me how you look like? God said to him, you take four types of birds, two that walk, two that fly. You chop into four pieces. And you put all, you mix up their body and put in four heels. You hold their head. You just hold their head. After you scattered them around, you hold these four heads. And now you call them back to you with my name. So Abraham does that. Now all the part that he has cut and divided separate into four different hills come like a transformer. You know the transformer? At first it's just like this. Suddenly it becomes a van. Suddenly it becomes an aeroplane. This idea came from the scripture. Only the modern people make a movie out of it. All this part join together to fly to him and to walk to him. To do what? To look for their parts. He just put it down and to that fly look for their own head and join it and they fly. And the two other look for their head and they join it by themselves and they just walk away. By showing his power, Abraham said, Enough, O oh Allah. Enough for me to have faith in you. I don't need to see you anymore. Looking at your power is sufficient. Moses asked, he want to see God. And what did Allah say? Look behind you. There is a mountain. What tour was seen. And then when he looked at the mountain, the like of Allah, not him, the like, descend. The mountain collapsed and Moses also fainted. When he woke up, he said, O oh, Almighty Allah, enough for me. But he promised us, if you stay connected with him, with kushok, with understanding, you know, when you worship Allah, the do and the don't. There are things that you cannot do, there are things that you must do when you are praying. Before praying, brother and sister, you can still yeah, talk to somebody. How are you today? I'm okay. No. When you arrive an hour ago, what is your plan after this? I think I'm going to the mall, look for lunch. You can communicate. Somebody comes, Salam alaikum, you can say, Wa alaikum salam, before you start your prayer. The minute you said, Allahu Akbar. No more responding to anything that is outside the prayer. No more eating, no more drinking, no more chewing, no more talking to anyone, no more responding to anything. Even the call just came in, ring, ring. You know, there is your friend, the call you waiting. You know, suddenly he just came in after he said, Allahu Akbar. What are you going to do? If you don't have the right knowledge, what do you think you'll do? It is very urgent, man. No, I've been waiting for the call. And he just came in after Allah. You cannot. Hello, I'm praying. Okay. You can't do that. When you do that, your prayer is invalid. You're not supposed to entertain anyone except him, the greatest, Allah. 
That is how you should have the understanding, the knowledge about the do and the don't when you start to pray. Be focused and you know what to recite. And the recitation, brother and sister, is fixed by Allah. Shown by Prophet Muhammad. You cannot change. You cannot change other chapter. No. Only start with Suratul Fatiha, the opening chapter. You open up yourself to God. With the right understanding, you have Kushwa. After telling, having the feeling that you're worshipping Allah, the true God, the God of the world, the God of the universe, now you are connected with the universe. Now you are not praying for yourself only. That's why after that, Allah is telling us about who is Him. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Now He is telling us about His attribute. The Rahman and the Rahim. What is the Rahman? What is the Rahim? You will learn from time to time. Is Rahman for everybody? Yes. Is Rahim for everybody? No. Rahman of Allah is for everyone. He created all of us. He provides for all of us. As long as you work towards it. You want knowledge? You seek knowledge. You cannot say, I want knowledge, I want knowledge, I want knowledge, I want to be a scientist, I want to be a scientist. Then you think you become a scientist? You have to learn. You have to go out and look for a scholar who is a scientist. You don't go to the mechanic and I want to be a scientist. Huh? Wrong place, lah. sorry. No, It's like now your car is having a problem or your phone is having a problem. What are you going to do? I want to repair my phone. I want to repair my phone. I want to repair my phone. You think your phone will be repaired? Do you send to the workshop? Or you send to the clinic? And call the doctor, doctor, what? What can I do for you? My phone problem. Huh? The doctor said, I also have a problem. My phone also have problem. <laughs> you don't go to the clinic, health clinic. And call the doctor to repair your phone. He said, there's a shop, iPhone picks shop, when you go there. A Rahman is for everybody. You work for it, you get it. God is fair. He said, I created all of you, I provide for you, as long as you work for it. A Rahim is a very unique feeling. Allah only gives to those who are connected to Him. When you are connected, brother and sister, with your parents, you respect them, you are close to them, you always respond to their need. How do you feel? If you want something from your parents, you can get it easily. How do you feel? I'll give you another example. Have you fallen in love before, sisters? Have you fallen in love before? Not yet? Going to. Yes, good. When you are in love, and that person also is responding to you, do you think if you want to ask for something very minor, he will give it to you? What do you think? Do you think the one that loves you will care for you? What do you think? You say, let go, uh, let go to San Francisco Cafe. Do you think he will? Okay, no problem. Can a person say, I love you so much, but he's so stingy. Cafe, I know, la, kopitiam enough, la. Hey, brother, this is, I'm not going to America here only. No, just uh, in uh, Damansara. <laughs> There's a good cafe. Do you think he will please you? What do you think? 
if a person who said he loves you, he cannot even offer you a coffee, you better forget that guy. So stingy. You know, if you love me, at least you know what I love. You give it to me. Now, this is that relationship, Ar-Rahim, like the parent to the children. Because you are so connected to them, you are part of them. You are from them. We are from Allah. He created us. And you please them. You please Allah. Anything you want, Allah give it to you. We fail to do that today. We are not connected to Him. Our connection with God is what? When I have the mood. Do you pray I, when I'm free? Oh, this is called free prayer. Do you talk to your parents every day, brothers and sisters? Do you talk to your parents every day? Please do that. Stay connected. Your parents care about you more than themselves. You don't understand. One day you become a parent, you will understand. You are prepared to work so hard to make sure you give the best to your children. But when your children grow big, they disconnect themselves from you. It's like when God gives you everything, He just wants you to stay connected with Him. You say, I have no time. You will not understand this connection until you became a father, a mother. I give you another scenario, brothers and sisters. I like to give this scenario to give you the feeling, what you understand by kushot, the sweetness. You love somebody so much. You keep on calling him. He don't respond. Normally, what do we do? After you call him one, no response, you never give up, true or not, sister? Do we give up easily? No. Call again, call again. Miss call, ten times. Are you upset? Are you upset? You can be upset, but you cannot make any conclusion yet. Maybe he has left his phone somewhere. Maybe somebody stole his phone. <laughs> we don't know. Don't start and judge him. Call us. Ten times I call you, don't respond. No more communication. When he call you back, he got his phone later on. He call you. No more respond. Disconnect yourself. Why you do that? Because you don't have the right understanding. You are upset. You know? And if you call 100 times, I normally will call somebody when I call them. If I call more than 7 times, but not continuously, maybe after 20 minutes, and then the call. After half an hour, and then the call. Give them space. Then I know maybe they have some problem. They do not want to be disturbed. I stop. I wait for their call. But I will send a message. Please call me back when you are free. Do we do that, sister? But how do you feel if he will respond? Please. I think enough. I don't want to have any relationship with you anymore. How do you feel? Whoever fall in love before, how do you feel? <sighs> Only Allah knows. They said love is blind. You can commit suicide because of that. Kalas, gone case. I want to go out to the mountain now. I want to fly down. No more point for me to live. No. Your love is very powerful. So what I want all of you to feel, brother and sister, don't underestimate the power of prayer. Stay connected with God. 
Don't miss your prayer. But when you pray, I want you to have the understanding, the kushok, to feel the sweetness. Then you will see. You will never miss your prayer anymore. You cannot miss your prayer. You miss one prayer, you feel that you're gone. The whole world is gone. Then at the end of the day, when we meet again, you can share with me your experience. But those who have been praying, if you don't feel kushok yet, you can also follow up with us and ask us, why I have been praying, I don't feel anything. You have the right to ask. Then we will try our best to give you the guidance. And then you try again. I believe at the end of the day, you will attain kusho. You find peace. You don't feel lonely anymore at that time. Nothing is more important for you than your connection with Almighty God, the Creator, the All-Knowing, the All-Seeing, who knows your need more than yourself, who knows what is the best for you. And when you are connected, Alhamdulillah. May Allah give us that understanding and give us the kusha in our prayer so that we will stay connected to Him. Now you don't have that kusha. Don't stop praying. Do. Do. They say, practice make perfect. Just do. May Allah guide us, brother and sister. I've given a signal time for the next class. Yeah? Oh, there's a query. Yeah. Is there any question from the sisters first? Any question from the sisters? No question. Any question from the brothers? Very good today. You know? Normally, when there's no question, that means, to my understanding, you all do yeah, have the understanding now. But I would like to ask you one question, because there's no question from all of you. What is kusho in the prayer? What is kusho? Anybody can share with me? What is kusho? Now mind. Because the first day for us to be back after the MCO. Everybody a bit shy, you know. Yeah. That's how we test our students. When the student said, no more question, that means you have the understanding. So when they ask them, they cannot explain. That means make me feel guilty. That means they don't really understand yet. But they are shy to ask. When you have the right understanding, you know how to explain. Like Islam, when you learn, you understand, you know how to share with other people. You know how to present this to other people. But don't be shy to ask in the future. Anytime you are not sure, just ask. It's your duty to ask. It's our duty to share with you the knowledge that Allah has given us. Any last question? Back to the sisters. Sister, any question? One, two, three. Brothers, back to the brother. Any question from the brother? Anything at all? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. At the end of the day, who can make us understand? Allah. I can share you with the knowledge, but the understanding will come from Him. When you are sincere, when you want to stay connected, ask Him for guidance, and He is going to put that understanding into your mind and your heart. Inshallah. Until we see you again, we hope for the best. Remember, sisters and brother, we have a special course coming up next week and the other week. These two Saturdays from 18 to the 25th is a special course that we conduct. For the 18 is full already. You still have some space on the 25th. For those who have never attended 
this special course called Perfecting My Salat. How to stay connected with Almighty Allah. Then we hope you can register with us so that we know how many can participate because the number also is limited because of that. Yeah, the social distancing, distancing that contact with us is a day course from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. A very, very important course. Until we see you again. Wabillahi tawfiqi wa laqli da'wana. Walhamdulillahi alamin. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha ila anta astaghfirka wa atubu ilaih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.